aquí en Auto 060 y después de hablar de lo bien que está yendo las ventas de autos nuevos aquí en Estados Unidos y del mercado, cómo va a llegar otra vez al nivel de 16, 17 millones de unidades, quizá para el próximo año o quizá el 2015 a más tardar, eh, vamos a hablar ahora de una lista que quizá va a ser, les va a sonar un poco extraña, diferente. We're switching back to English because now we're, uh, we're going to talk to James Resnick from uh, Edmunds.com. How are you, James? I'm good, and thank you for switching back to English. I, I, I wouldn't be very useful to you otherwise. <laughs> no, but uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a uh, very interesting list. We were talking in the first segment of the show about how the the, the sales in the U.S. are like exploding. I mean, we're going to reach about 16 to 17 million cars, and maybe next year or 2015. And then I come up across the internet at Edmunds.com uh, with your list. Very interesting list because uh, I argue that there's no bad cars in the market anymore, but. Uh, The, the headline, the very catchy headline from uh, your recent uh, post on Edmunds.com, the 17 worst cars you can buy. So, <laughs> can you explain a little bit the premises of the of the of the story? Because I mean, I don't know if you agree or not, but I don't think there are really bad cars in the market anymore. Well, there's no bad cars in the market if you consider, you know, is is anything going to? It's very unlikely that something's going to catch fire on you. Well, or the Tesla did. I mean, I mean, the what was it? The Frisker did. <laughs> right. But if we were to, basically the idea is, if you can say this car is the best compact car, or the best luxury SUV, there is going to be the one car that is just not as good as everything else. Yeah, I, 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 get, those yeah, I guess the, the competition. So let's, uh, let's start a little bit to, to let's take this, uh, this list. Uh, start obviously with a subcompact car, and the Smart uh, comes out as uh, the worst in the category for you. Absolutely, it it is it is cheap. It's only about twelve thousand dollars to start, but you get virtually no equipment. You don't have power steering, air conditioning, or even a radio. So you get like a, an engine, four wheels, and a seat. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, but if you put all of that stuff on it, it's more expensive than say a Ford Fiesta or a Chevy uh, Sonic. Cars that have five seats and four doors, and you know are Sort of ridiculous looking. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and then if you go to like the very top of, uh, of, the, of the of the list in, in that model, I mean, like the Cabrio is like almost 20 or more than 20, mm -hmm. which is very, very expensive uh, comparing it to other vehicles. Yeah, and even even the idea that it would be useful in a city where you can get, you know, tight parking spots, the transmission makes it very easy, or sorry, very hard to fit in those tight parking spots. It's a very Uh, jerky, slow-shifting transmission. Yeah, so. it's a great car. I don't know if uh, you're based in LA, right, or Southern California, yeah. but uh, the car to go company is doing really, really well. At least here in Miami, where we're based. Uh, I mean, you see them everywhere. The car to go uh, that's, smart that's cars. A shame. That's a shame. <laughs> well, it's um, a drive by minute, so it's it's what it is. <laughs> so let's jump to another one. I mean, the you the, the compact you mentioned, the Mitsubishi Lancer, and I guess the competition has like sped up away from them. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so the Lancer is a good-looking car, but it's it's very old now. Uh, I believe it came out in 2007, and basically everything else has been redesigned now. And it wasn't ever that great to begin with. It was never a class-leading car. Um, but just now, it's, it's, it's just old. So this is one instance when, you know, this definitely isn't a bad car, but basically every every other compact sedan is better. Yeah, I mean, the, the competition, the industry in general is moving much, much faster now in like, uh, now you see cars like, uh, Uh, debuting in, in one year and then a year and a half later they're making a, like a, a refresh of those cars uh, in some models and which is pretty amazing yeah then you have uh, the dodge avenger in the mid-size sedan uh, i i have to agree with that and with uh, especially with the mention to the chrysler, chrysler 200 i think those two cars are like fleet cars to me oh yeah not even that that's a bad day when your fleet assigns you that car <laughs> um it is It, it was it was even worse. They they overhauled it in 2011 and uh, made it better in every way, but it's still the worst car by by a mile. If you drive the Avenger and then a Ford Fusion, the new one, you, oh, you, yeah. or even the old one actually, you would laugh that they were supposedly. Yeah, that's that's not a fair comparison. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Then the Ford Taurus. I actually don't like the Ford Taurus. I think the proportions are like uh, like the, the greenhouse is too small and the bottom part is like too big. I don't know. I never like the the look of it. 
you know, and it, but this is another one where the Taurus isn't a bad car. It's just that, you know, it, everything else is better. So yeah. we just sort of, uh, that, that's what we ended up with because, you know, if you look at it, Buick LaCrosse is a great car. The new Chevy Impala is really good. Chrysler 300, Toyota Avalon, Volkswagen Stutt, all better than the Taurus. So yeah, I drove that car. Yeah, I recently bought, uh, drove the Buick LaCrosse and I was very, very impressed, not only with the design, the the interior, but the price. I mean, for about $40,000, you get a lot of car. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, the, the Alien uh, Lincoln uh, division with the MKS. I mean, that car really, I mean, I, I completely agree with your assessment. For $50,000, you can get a lot more for, you know, the car, especially the Europeans. I mean, if you really like it that much, you could just buy the Taurus. <laughs> you just buy a $40,000 Taurus and you'll save ten grand. Yeah, I think it's a little worrisome to see what Lincoln is going on because, I mean, they're investing a lot of money in that division and I don't think they're going anywhere with it. No, the, the MKZ is better than the MKS, uh, but... You know, yeah. I, I absolutely agree. Uh, so. This one really caught my attention. Uh, the, the Ferrari California, really? <laughs> absolutely. Okay, uh, right. The Ferrari California, is it a Ferrari? Yes. Would you like a Ferrari more than a Chrysler 200 or a Miata or something? Yes, I suppose you want to kill a Ferrari. But if you bought that Ferrari, you have bypassed so many amazing cars for the same amount of money or less including the Ferrari Italia, yeah. um, for something that really, if it didn't have a Ferrari badge, is a very bulbous, ugly car. Yeah, I understand that Ferrari was trying to attract more uh, female buyers with that car because it's, like, I don't know, it's like more practical in a way, I guess, I don't know. Uh, but not really, and I think I think women are smarter than that. I think <laughs> yeah, women would rather want an Aston Martin or a Bentley Continental oh, or that's, yeah, the GTC. Mercedes SLS. Yeah, absolutely. The worst coupe, and I think Nissan even agrees with you because they need to skin you it. You're right. You're right. Yeah. So uh, you, probably, you know, some of these cars are older and on the way out the door, and this is one of them. Yeah, I guess it was again not being a bad car, but just sells. I mean, like there's nothing really that that is very very attractive in that car. So Nissan agrees completely with you in that one. Yeah, I don't understand why you would buy the Nissan Altima Coupe because yeah. it's not that great looking and it's and not it's less practical than the uh, than the sedan. Yeah. And for the same money, you could have a Dodge Challenger or a Camaro, and those yeah. are far better cars. Absolutely, yeah. Then uh, hatchback, the worst hatchback, the CNIQ. I mean, that's one of those cars that you really hated or love it. I mean, it's kind of interesting looking, I guess, but um, again, like, I guess there are valid points to put it in, in this list. Yeah, the IQ is better than the Smart. It is better than the Smart, so yeah. we'll give you that. Um, but it's, it's just one of those cars that doesn't make a lot of... Uh, unless you do need to park in a very tiny parking spot, it's not that much more efficient than a regular uh, subcompact car. And having driven that car, you feel very vulnerable. Yeah. driving that so amongst all the big cars that we have in the United States. It makes sense in Tokyo, but not, not here. Yeah, maybe in Madrid or in other cities where it's like really, really, really crowded. So we're talking to Jamie Riznowick from Edmunds.com talking about the worst cars, the 17 worst cars you can buy. And again, like there's not necessarily there are bad cars, but there's like much better competition. And James, we're not going to be able to complete the list, but let's uh, touch on a couple more sure. before uh, we go. Uh, the pickup truck, uh, the Ridgeline, I think Honda is also, also agreeing with you in this one because I don't think they're going to make it for next year. I think it's coming back in uh, 2015, I believe, right? Yeah, the Ridgeline is actually a very interesting vehicle. There's only three small pickup trucks, so this is another one where we didn't really have a bad for a it's by default that it's the worst one. There's a lot of clever things in there, an interesting double inch tailgate. Yeah. Um, it's just not. It it it, it is a it's an interesting concept that didn't really work. People didn't want it. Yeah, but still they they're redesigning it for I I believe for 2015. So let's see what they come up with. And then uh, finally, let's touch on the Escalade X EXT, which uh, again is in the last year of its generation. I think they're coming up with a new model pretty soon, right? Yeah, yeah, and that's um, yeah the, the Escalade moment in the uh, in the in the wrap 
when the rapper world sun has has come to an end yeah uh, but it's not as bad as some of our electric vehicles that we had on our list the Mitsubishi <laughs> i-neve oh yeah yeah i drove that one and i completely agree with that uh, i think there's a, a lot of, of much better cars like the that's, fiat that's the fiat worst 500. car on this list yeah, By the absolutely. way, that is the worst car on this list. Yeah. Horrible, horrible car. I, I drove that for five minutes. I know. I drove it one night, and that was enough. Yeah, going back to the Escalade, I think even the thieves agree with you, because I think it, it, it was finally dropped out for the most stolen cars in the country uh, recently. So very interesting, this, James. Thank you very much. Uh, so can uh, I guess Edmunds.com, where can our audience can find more about your, uh, your reports? Absolutely, Edmunds.com. And on Monday, we will have our best car list. Let's okay. Check out on Edmunds.com for that. Maybe we'll talk again and then I'll see, see what's in there. Thank you very much, James. Thank you, gracias. Thank you, gracias. Pues ahí tienen la lista de los 17 peores autos que pueden comprar acá en Estados Unidos. No necesariamente que sean malos por sí solos, sino que la competencia se los ha llevado por encima realmente de una manera eh, muy, muy uh, obvia. Así que revisen la lista, la vamos a colocar en nuestra página de Facebook, facebook.com slash auto 060 para que la revisen. Y yo creo que van a estar eh, de acuerdo con James Rizwick de Edmunds.com. Y no se vayan que cuando regresemos tenemos más aquí en Auto 060. Yo soy Javier Moore.